What's up guys, back again with an advanced tutorial. Uh, today we are doing taps. This is gonna be a full on big tutorial on how to tap. Uh, not only doing single taps, but we're gonna be doing double tap, triple tap, quad tap, and then uh, plus four. Uh, we'll be doing late taps. So for example, your two tap juggle, two tap. So tapping like out of juggles, um, I'm going to give you all of the advice, all of the tips that you should need to be able to land as many taps and as many tap lines as you want to land. Um, I don't know about like 65 tap, that's up to Takuya to do, to do a tutorial, but I will, uh, I've, I've landed 10, I landed 10, uh, you know, last week. I was really pumped about that. I've been tapping for, I think, four years. I've been playing for eight years, probably longer than that. But I can consistently do four tap. Um, I've hit six juggle six. Um, and uh, I've really been cognizant of the things that I pick up as I learn new tap lines or hit a new tap record. Um, I love taps. It's one of my favorite parts of Kendama. I always say that it can be its own branch of Kendama because of how difficult it is and how much you can do with it. Um, it's huge to make like a nice new gen line. Taps are absolutely necessary. It's a great filler trick. It's a great Ken trick. Obviously there's different types of taps. There's like spike taps and there's tapping like Ken grip. Not gonna be touching those. Uh, I don't really know how to do those. I'm not very good at spike taps, but I am, uh, I am very experienced with normal Ken taps. And what a tap is for the beginners here, a tap is when you tap the Ken with the Tama, like this. So you can, you know, two tap, which is doon doon, right? A three tap is doo doo doo. Um, you can do big taps where you tap and it rotates once. I won't really be doing that here, um, but that's in general what a tap is. All right, before I get into how to one tap, uh, Kendama wise, uh, for all new gen juggling, tapping tricks, I recommend a longer string. I use usually a 70 centimeter string, which is what Lotus setups come with. That's my favorite string length. Most new kendamas can tap. I'm gonna sound extremely biased here, but I have never played a kendama that has tapped better than the Lotus Element Shape. One of the main reasons we designed the Element Shape was for tapping. Um, I don't exactly know how we end up getting there. It kind of surprised me how good it was at taps. I think it has something to do with the balance and the weights and also how like stuck the Serato is, which is something that we really wanted to do with this shape. But the sacred shape, the last Lotus shape is like pretty good. I've had good ones. I've had bad ones. Element shape, they've almost, they've extremely good at taps. Just and and you know for a condomin to be good at taps, it just means to me that they it bounces really well, uh, almost like a basketball, like a flat basketball. You're not gonna be able to play basketball with. Um, it's just gonna be like annoying and it's get to dribble really hard. But for a good tapping condomin, you, you'll be able to tap really easily, especially like multiple taps. I think a single tap it doesn't really matter what condomin you use, but for multiple taps, you want a good kendama. Um The best ever taps I've played are the hand turn element. I haven't played many other hand turns. So I don't know if it's just a hand turn thing. It could be, but uh, the hand turn elements, um, because of the shape and then because of, I guess, the wood or the fact that it's hand turned, those are the ones that I, if you look at my drawer, they're all sesh to pieces because of how much I tap them. But um, weights, I've been trying to figure out what weights work best. In terms of the Ken and the Tama, uh, I don't think it really matters that much. You know, I don't weigh my setups. I don't think it, it matters how big the difference is between the two. Um, I think a lighter Kendama is going to tap a little better. Uh, in general, they seem to tap better. And then, uh, you know, lighter meaning 70 to 80. Um, but I've, I, I usually pay light. I think, I think most elements are between 70 and 82. So I, I, don't, I don't weigh them. But I imagine that I am tapping 82 grams. Um, Serato to sword. When I interviewed Tablex, one of the best tappers in the world, he mentioned a Serato being a little heavier. I th uh, for me, I didn't notice much of a difference. I can't imagine like a gigantic difference between the Serato and the sword being a good tapping kendama. But I think in general, you want the Serato like a normal or a little higher. 
Uh, I've played, I've had a few setups that have a really low serrato and it's hard to get the, the taps around as you do them, but definitely like a regular serrato on, you know, most new setups will work. Okay, so let's start with how to one tap. Um, for all these tutorials that I'm doing today, I'm always gonna be pulling up and I'm always gonna be going to a juggle spike. Um, I feel like going to a lighthouse or going to a J-stick is a bit easier. There's not much advice I can give for those specific tricks. It's almost like something different. So just do whatever you feel. If it's easier for you to go to J-stick or lighthouse, depending on how uh, experienced you are at Kendama, I'm just mostly gonna be talking about the tapping part. Um, so a one tap, uh, this is going to look like this. So some things to keep in mind that are relevant for all taps. And I'm going to start here. First of all, on the pull up, or I mean, even lighthouse or Jace or airplane, you want to keep the Ken as straight as possible. I mentioned this in my last advanced tutorial, but you can see when I pull up for taps, especially you want to really focus on making this as straight as possible. So as you pull up, uh, you can see that there's a difference between, you know, pulling up a little angled and the Ken coming this way or the Ken coming this way. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, you'll really, you'll really notice a difference if it's a little bit off centered. So uh, one of the most important things you can do when learning to tap is making sure that it's as straight as possible. And that's a really good tip to uh, progress taps as well. Uh, if you keep it straight and you have that in your mind, I think taps are going to be easier for some reason. As you pull up, you want to tap the Ken uh, basically as low as you can get it. So let's just like kind of make this sideways. Uh, so let's say I'm pulling up and I'm tapping here. Okay. Um, you, I think here's probably too much. I think here's probably ideal. I think if you have this in your mind, like, like doing it this low, you'll probably just naturally tap it like this. I think that's what I do, but that's okay. Uh, you do not want to do this. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. As low as you can get it is, is great. And here's the reason for that. Tapping, you're basically defying gravity. Well, you're really not, but you are. Um, when you tap, you want to give the Ken as much space and as much air as you can so you can switch grips. If you're tapping like this, think about where the Ken is going, right? It's going down because of gravity and you're pushing it this way. So it's gonna be kind of going like here. If you tap it here, you're tapping it up, the Ken's gonna move up a little bit. I mean, gravity is still gonna push it down, but instead of it going like this way, at least it's kind of going up. And then if you tap it here, almost towards you, because this because you have a heavy, because you have a lot of weight down here from the Serato, that's gonna almost go like up perfectly. And that's like your best bet in terms of giving yourself time. It's a really, really solid thing to remind yourself as you progress in taps. And I'm gonna mention this a million times, but keep reminding yourself to tap as low as possible. Um, so for single tap, as the tap comes around, uh, it's going to feel really weird. It's going to take a lot of time to get to learn this. Um, I'm talking like hours and hours, but as it comes around, you're going to throw the, so it's, you tap it, the Tama's in your hand, throw the Tama. Hopefully the Tama is spinning because you watched my last advanced tutorial. Um, you're going to, the Ken's going to come backwards, which is going to be awkward to catch, especially if you don't do a lot of inwards. Um, that's going to feel weird. That's going to take some time to learn. And then from here, you have a jiggle spike, which again, check out my last tutorial for, uh, for Tama control on the uh, jiggle spike. I see a lot of people with their single taps kind of grab it too early, you know, as it's coming around this way, they kind of grab it and move it. Um, I think that has to do with them running out of space, running out of time, and it then probably has to do with maybe tapping too early. Uh, but it also just has to do with, you know, learning, going through a normal learning process. 
But um, you can really, you know, you know, I think I said this in my juggling tutorial, but you can really relax your wrist. I think that's gonna look better uh, when tapping. Maybe not when actually tapping, but when you're uh, catching the can, you know, doing the time of control, doing the, the juggle, relaxing your wrist is going to help. Okay, let's do two tap. Uh, so this is what a two tap looks like. So with the two tap, you're obviously going to add an additional tap after the Ken comes around. You're gonna tap it again, then it comes towards you, and then you execute a juggle spike. You wanna make sure you have the single tap down. You know, I think when I'm doing, when I'm teaching somebody a Kendama tutorial, I like to give them a lot of freedom when it comes to what they wanna learn first. Um, but I think for taps, I think it's, it's super necessary to learn them one at a time. When it comes to like late taps, that's something that you can be more creative with, whether you wanna learn like one, one, one or four tap first, for example. Um, but you want to get down the single tap uh, really well uh, because you really need to get that down into your muscle memory of what a tapping feels like. It's uh, Tapping is super hard. I mean, you're controlling the Ken only by touching the Tama. You know, so one thing that's going to happen because you're tapping it twice on this first Ken, uh, if it's not totally straight, or even if you hit it a little bit off balance, like if you like, you know, wong it, like a wong tap, uh, the second tap is going to be much harder. Before you do the first tap, you want to make sure the ken is coming up super straight. And when you do the first tap, you want to make sure that you hit it super straight. You don't hit it to the side at all. And at this moment, I'm going to talk about placement. Um... So I talked about the Ken being straight. The Tama, I like to tap right next to the bevel. Uh, I like to hold it like this because I, I, uh, I, I think spinning is the best thing you can do for Tama control out of tapping. Um, you do not want to tap it straight on because it's gonna hit the bevel and it's gonna tap weird. In terms of like my arm, you know, I, I pull up, so I yank it this way. Uh, and then I immediately get ready to tap. Uh, so I wait until it comes around. I wait a little extra long. And then I'm doing like a motion. It looks like it's almost towards my face, you know? So I'm not going up. I'm not going to the side, right? And I guess that kind of is relevant to, you know, where I'm tapping it, which is ideally down here. But yeah, it's just a very slight movement. So a ghost tap would be me not moving at all, right? And a regular tap would be this, and then a big tap, I'm doing it a little harder. So that's gonna take a lot of time to learn, but yeah, I'm tapping it this way. And then I am stopping to get ready for the next tap or for the juggle spike or whatever I'm doing. So for the second tap, uh, you gotta be super quick. And two tap is really hard to learn. Uh, before I get into the second tap, I'm also going to talk about styles. Uh, there's a lot of different styles of tapping. I think the most common, uh, the way that I tap, I think looks similar to the way that a lot of other people tap, but there are specific people in the community like Zach Gallagher, uh, Nick does it a little bit, um, Gabe from uh, Lock Studios in Canada. They have this very like nonchalant, loose thing going on and it comes very prevalent in two tap. I don't know exactly how they learned it, what they learned it. I'm able to replicate it after practicing it a little bit, but instead of like one, two, they kind of just like really go side to side, almost like, I'll put a clip of Zach doing this so you can see. And I think what's going on is they're tapping this low, which is great. They're tapping it really fast. Uh, faster than I tap it and they don't really move the Tama after they tap it They don't move the Tama 
The Ken comes around, they just barely hit the second tap. And because it's moving so fast, it just bounces right around. Uh, I notice this a lot with even taps. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to explain it. I, I don't know if you if they do that on purpose or not. I don't think they do. I think it just kind of comes natural to them. It looks really cool, um, but it's just something that, you know, with the way that my style ended up being, I don't really do that. Um, so what I do is more of like a second movement. So now getting to the second tap, I kind of do more of like a second movement to get there. Uh, I can kind of feel my arm. I don't know if it looks like it, but I am kind of pushing up in that second tap. And again, what you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that you are waiting as much as you can. A lot of people on two tap, especially, they want to go super quick. And you do, do, you do go quick, but you want to slow down like what your hand wants to do. Um, you know, you have a lot of space to play with. So so the more you wait on that second tap for it to be like down here, the uh, more time that you get. So you can see if I, if I tap it like up here, I don't have a lot of time because I hit it, it's already coming around right now. So I have to quickly juggle spike versus if I hit it down here, I have a lot of time for it to come around. Yeah, the more you hit down, the more the Ken's gonna go up, the more time you're gonna have. So I really recommend learning, uh, how, learning the ability to tap as low as you can on the Ken. And speaking of like space here, uh, people are generally like above the belly button to around the chin. Uh, just keep that in mind as you learn. I think it ends up just being preference. But I always kind of find it, it's nice to remind myself to tap a little bit higher. So the two tap is the first time that we're going to be catching the Ken in like a normal, regular flip, right? Because the second, the single tap, it was coming away from you. People might find this easier and some people might find this harder. For me, two tap, even taps, two tap, four tap, six tap was way harder for a long time. I don't know if I just practiced like single tap like a ton, but um, I know I've talked to a few people who find odds way easier than evens. Um, I think like last November, I was like really grinding for a four tap line and that's when it finally clicked. I really hated four tap at, at one point. I liked five tap more than four tap, which is super weird, but I just was really comfortable with the Ken coming away from me versus towards me. I also had a big, big hard. I had a really, really, really hard time with releasing the Tama after that second tap. It looked very awkward for me. I don't exactly know what it ended up happening for me to be more comfortable with the two tap. I think I just got more comfortable with time, which is a big thing you will do as you learn taps. Like it's gonna be like rough and uh, it's gonna be like a, a, a learning to tap is, it's really difficult, it's rough like on your like muscle memory. Like it takes a lot of time and grinding to be able to be comfortable with these with these maneuvers. But I think I still kind of release the Tama like too far out here when I really should be like giving myself time and bringing it in. I think it's just an old habit. All right, moving on to three tap. Um, so three tap looks like this. Uh, so what else should I add here? Uh, I've already talked about straightness, super important still. I've already talked about hitting it as low as you can on the Ken, super important still for three tap. One thing I can mention for three tap, it's really interesting. It doesn't really matter if you're going from one to two or if you're going from seven to eight, or I'm sure 20 to 22. Uh, 
once you're going for the next increment, you feel like you don't have enough space every single time, which is super crazy because I remember feeling like I didn't have enough space at three tap and now I'm doing like eight tap and uh, I feel like 12 tap is impossible for me now, but obviously it's not. Um, I think as you tap, there's gonna be a lot of like little tricks that you learn that helps you uh, with the trick itself. So one thing that I picked up and I'm mentioning, I wrote down like, eight of them, but I've already mentioned a few. Uh, another thing that I learned, I think it was learning three tap, that I realized that I can really use the force of the pull up to like go up with it, you know? Like if I was going from airplane, it would almost be like, instead of tapping like this, it would be like using my knees and starting down here and going up, which obviously is gonna give you more time and space to tap. So at three tap, so this is a, is a, it's a really good tip to be cognizant of your, of the motion of the Ken, you know, like you can really over exaggerate the pull up. So like maybe like a good exercise would be to like do as many, you know, Ken's as you can, Ken flips as you can. Um, because you really want to get down the ability to like go up with it, to like go up with the Ken, um, because you're, and then from there, like the next step is like tapping up and then down, especially as you like get higher. I'm sure at three, like you can kind of like sneak one off as it's going up and then you just got like a two tap, you know? Or maybe you, or maybe you're, maybe you think of it the other way of, of getting two off real quick. And then as it's coming down, you hit the other one. By the way, that's another tip. I'm sure these things are going to come to me as I do this tutorial. But uh, as I was learning taps, I remember like sp spacing them out. And I talked to Ben Harold about this. Um, I think it's sometimes easier to think of taps as like a two than a one or like a one than a two or like a six, then an eight. I think that's one of the uh, tricks that you can use to learning, make learning this a little easier. So four is when you, when I really had to figure out my issue with my Tama movement, like I said, like I was talking about earlier. Uh, but now I figured it out. And after like a year and a half of like doing fours constantly, I think four is like one of my most comfortable, one of my most comfortable tapping movements. I love how it, the Ken, the Tama comes back to me. I have it like ingrained in my muscle memory enough where I can just kind of execute it. Four is when you, if you can watch my, if you watch my four tap, I'm really like kind of keeping the, the Ken still. I think that's like, when you start, instead of going up and down, you can kind of like, for a, for a split second, you can kind of hover it, which is super important if you wanna keep progressing taps. So I'm gonna talk about another um, helpful tip that I picked up as, I was, as I've been progressing taps, and that is turning my wrist. Um, I think if, if you can do a few taps right now, and if you try that right now, I think it's gonna help. Um, I don't know exactly know what it is, but it makes it easier for some reason. It must have something to do with like the movement. Um, for some reason, it's just easier. So you can kind of, instead of like doing it like that, instead of like tapping with your wrist like that, try to turn it a little bit. That's all I'll say. And also learning four tap, you know, again, all the things I said previously apply, um, but with four tap, you can kind of get more creative. Let's say like you're really good at like two, you can kind of think of this as a two, two, right? Like that helps me even now. I'm, maybe you can hear it in the video, but I really did like a two, two. You can maybe like, you maybe you'll learn, you'll, you'll, you'll pick up like your own tips as you grind out these tricks. But uh, for me, sometimes I was really focusing, like I noticed it helped me to like focus on the very first one and have the rest come through or focus on the very last one. Um, for whatever reason, I think putting like, you know, being 
by putting uh, different focus on different aspects of this movement will help. And then, you know, ideally it all comes together, it all gets mashed into your muscle memory, and then it's there. And I'm going to reiterate this again, but I think as like time goes on and you continue, you progress your taps, um, you kind of want to get like right into that first tap, you know, you want to go super quick. And uh, I urge you to kind of go slow on that first one. Um, you know, you can, you can still do that like movement upwards that I mentioned earlier, and you can also wait until it's at the right position to tap, you know? Like I think a combination of those two things is ideal. I've never really focused much on where I'm tapping. I said earlier, like on the handle, I think that's what I do. Um, I'm sure sometimes I tap, it's like not quite there. Maybe it's more on the ring or I guess like it can barely touch like here. But it's not something that I super, I, I'm super focused on. I don't know if other people have been focused on that. But I thought I'd mention that because I'm sure people, some, some people were like wondering. Okay, so that's four. Um, everything above four, I, I can't think of any specific, like I'm not saying it's, it's still very, very difficult uh, for the, for, to do the next increment. Um, but there's just not much more to say besides, there's not much more to say, but there's a lot more to do, which is to grind. Uh, I think every time you go up an increment, it is a grind to get more time, to get more space, to learn to calm your hands and calm yourself so you don't get too panicky. Um, you know, as I went up an increment, I realized how much tapping, how tapping really like makes my shoulder tired. And for me specifically, it's like kind of right here, my shoulder, a little bicep. If I go for like 10 minutes trying like a 10 tap, it gets sore and I, I like lose the ability to tap. Like I'll, I'll like, it'll just be like kind of like too tight. Um, so what's really helped me as I've grinded and progressed taps is taking breaks. Like after like 10 minutes, for example, I'll take a little bit of break. I'll like shake my arm out, give it a rest. Uh, by the way, a quick side note, I think that's why, a reason why a lot of people will lace after they take a break. It's not because like, it's just this random lucky thing. I think it's because you're, you gave your muscles a chance to relax. And when you go back, your muscles are refreshed and then your mind is like totally on the, uh, the trick and knows what, what to do. But yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, I did six, I did seven on camera. Uh, you can check that out on Instagram. I did eight on my story. I'm going to try to film 10 soon. Um, but it's, I don't know, for me, it's just kind of going back, like going back to the grind. Like I'll, I'll hit a new number. I'll play with that number, get better at it and then go back and then like kind of forget about doing taps. Maybe just like if I just had hit six, I'd do four for a while. And then, uh, and then I kind of go back to like, okay, getting down to six. I think as long as you keep pushing yourself, obviously you'll keep progressing. But I also, I think that when you, you know, going for another tap, it's extremely helpful, very fluent with the tap uh, before that. So if you're going for four, um, it's, it's really helpful to, to get down, to get down one, two, and three. Because as you ingrain those into your muscle memory and as you like get a better fuel for taps, it's just going to help you down the line. But obviously just because you've done four tap a thousand times doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be super good at six tap. You still need to grind that to get more time. I think the difference between a four tap and a six tap, a six tap and a 12 tap, you're doing the same motion. You're tapping on the same beat. It's just, I think it, what it then, then comes down to is being able to like hover the Ken more. So instead of like having enough time to do four, you need to like be able to like hover the Ken enough and hit it perfectly like on the spot for it to stay in the general range. All right, let's talk uh, late taps. Late taps as in tap, 
tap, juggle spike. Or two tap, juggle, two tap. Or like three tap, juggle one, juggle one, juggle one. Or let's say three, two, one tap. Not the cleanest, but you get the point. If you can single tap, juggle spike, uh, it's still like a big jump to go to single tap, juggle, single tap, juggle spike. And that's because um, most of the time after you single tap, your ken and your hand and your tama are all in kind of different places uh, for you to reset and get into a single tap again. And I think the biggest piece of advice for late taps is that you want to, for, for your second tap or for, for your late tap, you want to replicate the same movement that you did for the first tap. So if I'm like doing a single tap, a single tap again, I want to give the objects enough time to, so when I get to that single tap, it's like in the same spot, you know, and I'm still doing all the techniques that I already share with you with like hitting it low, but you want, you don't want to like tap, throw it super high and tap up here. Cause you're not used to that. You don't know how to do that. You know, like you want to tap and then have enough control, which is something that you'll learn to like throw it up and tap exactly where it was before. I don't know. I, I can do a test to see how good I am at this, but let me try to like two tap, juggle two tap and see if it's like around the same place. So that, I think that was kind of close. So like my first two tap, if it's like here, when I go for the juggle, I want to toss it. So it's like here again, because if it's like here, I, I won't get enough movement, right? Another thing that you're going to need to learn about late tapping is juggling into a tap. That is itself what gives people the most difficulty. And I think it's the reason why this trick is hard, because if you're used to pulling up or going from lighthouse or going from airplane, like those are all specific things in it, in it, in it of itself. But like while the time is in the air to juggle and then like be controlled enough in your juggle to be able to toss it back up again, considering the string is getting freaky, um, it's super hard. So what I think you should focus on as you learn late taps is that juggling control. Um, it's that resetting to where the first tap was. And it's like, again, you know, using the time and using the space that you have. You don't need to do this super quick and super tight. Like you have a lot of space, you know? I think a lot of like Japanese players who in my opinion have like the best form. If you look at Rui's taps, you can see how each tap is so replicated. They're so similar. They are super clean. And there's a lot of space, like it's a lot of time between each single tap, you know? Like I, I can throw that Ken pretty high after the juggle and hit it late. And that buys me a lot of time to be able to do, to like get ready for the next, for the next tap, you know? Um, I, I think what would probably help, I didn't do this myself, but I imagine what would help is like, going into it from a juggle. I just learned it just from like, you know, doing this. I, I, I thought it was really fun to like, once I get done three tap to go like to three one and then go to three two and then go to three two one. Um, yeah, it was always really fun for me. I, the most I've hit was, I think it's like six six. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't really matter if you, I, I think uh, you don't necessarily need to go straight in from like, a toss, you can like juggle first, you know, or even if it's easier, don't be ashamed to like do like two juggles and then get control again, you know, especially as you're starting, like that's okay, you know. I'm gonna go through one more trick. Uh, this is my favorite trick, I think like ever. I've done this trick so many times. Um, I've always been a fan of like tapping, late flipping, then tapping. So one of my favorite tricks is like three tap, juggle, late, triple, can flip, juggle, three tap. This took me so long to get 
I put it on my edit. You can check it out. It's called uh, Gravity a few years ago. I think like before five years ago. You know, I don't think there's anything super special um, about learning like late, late taps, except as you progress into this, it takes a lot of time, a lot of grinding, and eventually you just get enough control, you know? And I've been, I used to, my, it wasn't me doing this, but it was my like arm would really like panic and tense up. Um, as I'm going for late taps and it does now if I'm going for like, you know, like three, 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 three or whatever, like my arm starts getting more and more tense. I think it's just, it's, it's just physical. But, um, I think as you practice, you get looser and looser and you kind of remind yourself, it's almost like a mental thing, you know, when you're going for that next three tap to like loosen up again and use the time. I think for late taps, your mind wants to go a lot faster and a lot quicker and it's super important to just chill um, as it comes around again. Do another big juggle, you know, a, a big Ken toss and take your time with the next three. Like, especially with your knees, you have a lot of time, you know? Like, I can do like a really slow three to give you an example. You know, that's pretty slow. Wasn't the cleanest, but uh, I've done this trick a million times. And I think after all, after years of doing it, I just really learned to like, after that last can to use my juggle to get time and then really make sure to, to wait on the three tap and do that slowly as well. And then I get to a juggle spike. So what I'm gonna end with is, I know taps are extremely frustrating. They take a long, long time. Trust me, everybody knows this. There's nobody, I believe, that's naturally gifted at taps. I think the best tappers have tapped the most, like Tablex and Takuya. I think they have tapped the most out of anybody. So just kind of keep progressing. Uh, take it easy on yourself. Give yourself a lot of time, like I'm saying like days, weeks, months, to slowly build yourself up. Um, I think the most learning does come in from like a really strong, sweaty grind. I think that's where neuroplasticity works the best. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but, you know, learning something, I think it does take like a long grind. But that being said, you don't need to do everything at once. You know, it's going to take a lot of time to uh, get good at this because this is a very, very difficult maneuver. It's a very, very difficult trick. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, uh, let me know if this helped. Let me know uh, what helped because it might help somebody else trying to learn this, trying to learn taps. And uh, if you have any advice for people if you know taps you have any other advice throw it in the comments because that's going to be very helpful too all right the only thing i ask from you for watching these videos is subscribing that would be wonderful if you could subscribe to the channel all right thanks guys see you